Hello, I'm Philip Meyer. I'm an electronics engineer, and yeah, what I have here is a three-inch floppy drive, and I will show you how to replace the drive belts. So from time to time, these drive belts in there go bad, and this video will be about showing you how to replace it. So enjoy. Well, I have two of these rather exotic floppy drives here. They are both bad, and yeah. Or to replace these uh, drive belts, I will have to lift the PCBs. But before that, um, I want to show you real quick how to diagnose that that is really the problem here. And here we can um, turn the the little uh, drive wheel, which drives the floppy disk. And by watching here. To, uh, at the motor, if you do not see that rotating, this little piece of brass here, it doesn't rotate. If it doesn't rotate, you know the drive belt is bad. And here on you know, this model, there are two different models, and here you see nothing turns. So that just means the drive belt is bad. That's a common problem for these floppies. Uh, they all go bad from time to time and they need spare parts. Okay, well, um, to, um, to lift the PCBs you have to unscrew these screws that hold the PCB in place. See one here, one here, and the third one there. That should be it. And for the other one, it should be only these two. I don't see another one. And here, if you plan to connect these to the PC, these are sugar drives, there's really nothing in it. It's a pretty much normal sugar drive, and I also did that back in the days. I hooked one of them up to a PC to write back images and stuff. And um, you have to be a bit careful with this connector, the 5 and 12 volts, that's reversed. If you connect your PC power supply directly to that, then you will burn the floppy immediately. So you should keep that in mind. Um, yeah, anyway, pretty nice. Floppy drives, a bit exotic, disks are exotic as well. But anyway, so let's lift the PCBs and see what's underneath. Okay, I've lifted the PCBs as good as I can. I mean, for this, for this, it will be a bit difficult because um, this appears to be a later model, and they directly soldered the connector from the motor and some other stuff directly to the board, so you can't really unconnect it. But I'm sure I will get the practice with this drive to do the acrobatics inside um, without unsoldering it. If I cannot, if I don't manage to do it, then I will have to grab the soldering iron and unsolder this. But I'm right now. I'm confident I can do it. So these screws belong to this one. So here, yeah, here we already see that the drive belt has gone really bad. I mean, it's it's completely ah. That's that's really disgusting. It's like a yeah, bleh, bleh. that's really ugly. But yeah, anyway, <laughs> uh, looks like the drive belt never been changed here before. And here it's kind of the same. So drive belt got stuck all around the uh, the motor uh, motor pulley there. So yeah, seeing what I've job that has to be done here is pretty simple. I got two new belts here. Hope they fit well. They are sold especially for this floppy drive from a video game seller that sells these stuff. So yeah, the other one where to the connectors I had to connect the disconnect the motor connector right here and the three other connectors there and what you do is, what you first do is you pull the PCB slightly back and of course this model thing here that sticks out will be in, in the way but you can easily manage to do it by um, 
by pushing it around a little bit. Um, yeah, the only thing I should mention is I should be a bit careful with all these. It's very fragile. That's a one layer, one layer uh, cardboard PCB. And what's nice is they have these little SMD surface mounted parts that is mounted inside the PCB for some reason. I don't know. It might not have been necessary, but obviously they done that. Maybe they have done it because they wanted to solder that, uh, because they wanted to wave soldering and they had some mechanism to hold that in place, maybe some tape or something they remove afterwards and then they might have been able to do wave soldering here, but I don't know. Um, yeah, I cannot do that with one hand, of course, so I will just, I uh, cannot film the procedure where I wrap the belt around it, but yeah, and here I also cannot film it, but yeah, let's see if I manage to do it and um, then I show the, the results in a minute. Right now I see there's a lot of mess around this pulley here. I will have to clean that with acetone. There's no way around it. That has to be clean. This thing here is pretty much nice and clean, so that's not a problem, but this one here really needs cleaning, so I will take it down to the basement and clean that. So it's now as clean as I could get it. I don't know what this greenish shit is there, but maybe it's oxidized brass, so I don't know. I don't care. So that's clean enough. And yeah, now let's put the belt on finally. Okay, that's how it should be. It's pretty simple. I put you put it in on first on here around here and then you just pull it around here and I think it's a good idea to give that a few turns just to make sure that it's in good position. By the way, back in the days I managed to repair such a floppy with a household rubber belt, but I absolutely cannot recommend that. Um, so yeah, if you don't want to regret your repair attempts, then use a proper belt. Okay, I think this one is good for another 30 years of operation. <laughs> okay, well, so let's get the PCB in place and screw that back together before we move over for the, to that one. That is way more difficult, so I finish that one first. Okay, and again, it's the same problem like with the other one. Let's see. Yeah, that's really odd. I have never seen a drive that's in that bad condition. Yeah. Okay, again, there's some green shit underneath. And yeah, again, no way around cleaning that with acetone. Okay, now got it nice and clean. My fingers are dirty now. So, yeah, hmm, yeah, I need to mess with that now. Well, that wasn't very difficult. I mean, I just, you just hang the the belt inside the drive and mm, lay it around the big wheel and then you pull it around the small wheel and then you give it a few turns to set properly so and then the drive is good for another 30 years of operation probably okay let's then it be let's be fair i mean i give it 10 years Okay, fine. Let's screw that back together now. Okay, before I put it back in, I should mention 
as I have these, uh, oops, these two um, wire clips here, where you have to, they have to loosen them when you want to lift the PCB. And now I put them back in place. So now don't forget that in the end. So I think that's all. You see, plugs at the side, so no hidden plugs. Hopefully, no, there aren't any. So. For the other drive, you have a plug right here. Don't forget that you wouldn't see it in the end if you forgot it. So, yeah, that's done. Let's do the check. Here you see that rotating. So, that's how you know your drive belt is intact. Okay, so these both are now fixed. And yeah, get, I will screw them now back into the device where I removed them from. It was in this case, it was a Schneider Joyce. That's where they were originally in. And that's where they go. So, yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this quick tour and I really hope that helps you to, that the video helps you to restore your old three inch floppy drives to back to working condition. So that's it. Catch you next time.